Hello, how are you? My name is Alejandro Sandoval, and this is the Solo Negocios video blog for the summary of the Solo Negocios Bulletin for today, July 19, 2018. And today, the Mexican peso got depreciated given the following elements. Uh, regarding U.S. indicators, they were strong. For example, request for unemployment insurance, 2007, uh, for the week that ended last week, last Friday. It is a minimum not seen since the 1970s. An amazing result for labor markets, a very strong figure to show the power and the strength of the U.S. economy. And, and the result is, is given this employment data, specifically this insurance for unemployment, which implies how people, when they don't find unemployment, they look for this type of support. And this is the lowest since, since, since the 1970s. Also, the economic activity by Philadelphia Fed index was 25.7 points in July, when it was 21.5 expected. Pretty good results. Oil was mixed, and then, therefore, given these indicators, the Federal Reserve is expected to increase higher rates or at a, at a, at a faster pace. But during the day, there was this killing argument. An argument that was not violated by previous presidents in the United States ever, as far as I understand, at least since the Federal Reserve exists. President Trump today stated that he's not liking how the Federal Reserve is increasing the rates because for once it decreases chances for the economic uh, activity to grow, even financing, and for two, weakness, uh, makes a, a dollar, a US dollar stronger. And a, a, a stronger US dollar is not convenient for his trade interests. He said that anyways he's going to allow them to work. What he implies. The Federal Reserve is an independent entity to the executive branch of the United States government. Yes, there are links, legal ones, institutional ones. But what are he talking about? about? Mentioning anything about the, the monetary policy, which by once is like an intervention. Later on the day, the White House came out to speak and said that he never intended to interfere and that he respects the independence of this uh, monetary policy instance or institution. But the truth is that for once he interfered with, a go with an argument, but you know what? He is right. He has a right to express his ideas, to put a given freedom of speech, a, a position regarding monetary policy, but the way he ended, I'm going to allow them to work because they know what they're doing, is a, is a, is a part where it implies that he might, in, a, in any moment, not allow them. And will he have the power? Well, he can remove the president of our reserve, but there are elements there that should be respected within this at least autonomy position of a monetary policy stance rather than the executive uh, branch. And, and, and this is fought in Mexico greatly. Uh, Mr. Lopez Obrador, I'm bringing this topic to him, stated and has repeating that he's going to respect Banco de Mexico's autonomy. But now Carlos Ursúa, the future Minister of Finance, is saying that he wants to be moving those positions or the governors and sub governors that we are that they are occupying occupying the the committees the main committees of the Banco de Mexico's uh, decision making committee let's say and, and make them renewed by fresh people new people but who you know intervention again so this is a, a delicate instance uh, and specifically Trump brought down the strength of the U.S. dollar brought down the circumstance that the U.S. indicators helped, given these arguments against, and they're considered that way in the market, against the Federal Reserve. Watch out, that's not good. We're going to leave this today. The Mexican peso got appreciated, depreciated given this strength of the U.S. dollar. It was stronger before, but then this came out and, and, and another discussion and potential volatility crisis or volatility generator crisis will begin 
to be discussed in the following days. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow.